Hey team, welcome back to the channel. This week I'm in none other than Turin and I'm here because the Giro d'Italia has landed and I'm so, so excited. I haven't really watched a, a whole lot of pro cycling in person. I've come to one of the biggest races in the world, uh, no less. I think important preface for this video, I absolutely love cycling, but I think cycling is quite a complex sport for newbies and people that aren't so familiar with the sport to watch. It's, there's a lot going on, there's a lot to digest. And I think for me, what I really want to do in this video is break down some things that I'm curious about, things that I might not be aware of. I don't know every name in the peloton, but certainly I know who I'm looking out for. And who would that be? Well, Tadej Pogaccia, of course, um, regarded as one of the greatest of all time, uh, alongside Eddie Merckx even. And he rides for UAE Team Emirates, who are one of the, well, the most successful team this season so far. And so obviously everyone's looking out for him. He is head and shoulders above everyone else in this peloton. But we do have my favorite rider, Geraint Thomas, um, a really decorated British Olympian, Tour de France winner. And he's got a great podcast called GTCC for anyone that wants to learn more about pro cycling. Just uh, heading around the, the village of sorts at the moment in Torino. Stage one, we'll head out from Veneria Reale. Uh, and come back around to Torino. So hopefully I can catch the start and hopefully I can catch them come in after stage one. But I think the thing to note with Grand Tours is that there's 21 days of racing. Anything can happen. We're gonna see some stars born at this Giro. And um, yeah, I'm gonna be following throughout, although I am just here for stage one. So I'm just here at the Piazza Castello and I'm a bit concerned for the riders because it is looking a little bit damp. We've had some thunderstorms and that just makes it a bit more tense on the road. If you win the first stage, you get the opportunity to go into the leader's jersey, the Maya Rosa, which is the pink jersey. And so everyone is gonna be gunning for it tomorrow and a wet stage just makes it a little bit more interesting, a little bit harder to stay upright on the bike. So wishing all the riders well and hopefully there's uh, there's no severe accidents or incidents. Okay team, we've made it here to Veneria Reale. It's a bit of a trek because I got off the train at the wrong spot, but that's absolutely fine. But I'm definitely getting a sense for the buzz of the whole thing now, the whole spectacle. And what a beautiful place this is. Yeah, gonna do some more exploring prior to the race. I think it sets off at 1.50, so time for a coffee and a toilet stop. But uh, yeah, really excited. It's pretty cool to be here now. So here we are in the main square, and this is where we'll be kicking off from. I've just had a really good chat with the Eritrean fans who are following a couple of riders in the bunch, most notably Biniam Gomai, who's one of my favorite riders. So uh, it's so good to see the Eritreans here supporting Biniam, who's a fantastic athlete. Um, as well as the other Eritrean riders in the race. <laughs> yes, lads. Okay, so it's definitely hotting up now. We've had a uh, quartet of vehicles roll down the road in front of the race, so all of the race sponsors. We also saw a massive Giro trophy as well. Um, and I've got the Shimano cars in the back here. So correct me if I'm wrong uh, in the audience, but these are bikes where if someone crashes their bike and they don't have a team car nearby with the bike that they need, these are the bikes that are used, presumably. Correct me if I'm wrong. And they look like sick bikes as well. I saw Bianchi um, badges on the front of them and they're all, yeah, Dura, Shimano, Dura Ace, everything more than an hour before the race starts. There's a lot of buzz, uh, but still a bit of time to wait. Okay, we're switching cameras because I've got the pole, so we'll get some really good vantage points and the audio on this camera is much better. So I don't need to use microphones. And look, I think I've seen enough of the pro riders. We're actually walking down a road where the team buses must be at the bottom of because all the riders are coming back down here 
once they've presented up at the palace. Um, and so I'm now heading towards a road that they will come by on, um, strategically positioning myself so that I can get the train back to Turin. First, here's EF Education and Esteban Chavez. Go on, Esteban. How sick is that? Oh, I'm buzzing with that. Here's Quick Step Sudal. And Tim Merlier, one of the best sprinters in the world. Watch out for him. He's going to be winning stages. Come down here. Just seen some of the best riders in the race. So, so stoked. That's uh, everything else is a bonus now, really. Now that I've seen all the riders and soaked up the atmosphere. That's Damiano Caruso. Visma Lisa bike just went by there with the European champion Christophe Laporte. And this is where the team bus is at. Okay, here's the UAE Team Emirates bus. This one will be the most popular bus going because of a certain Tade Pogaccia. So we'll just see if we can see the man. But you see how this bus just becomes a little bit bigger. Stuff folds out and it's like very livable in there for the team. Although they do stay at hotels, so not living in there. But they're preparing and going through race strategies in there. <laughs> All right, life is complete. I have just seen Tade Pogaccia. I'm gonna get that clip up on the screen just here because I took it for the reels, you know, I took it for the stories. Um, but yeah, great moment for me. Makes this whole thing uh, very special. And um, yes, yeah, so I've done the team buses now. I think important to note as well for our Aussie viewers, we do have a vested interest in this race. Um, forgive me for, for not talking up the entire Aussie field, but two people of note, Ben O'Connor for uh, Decathlon AG2R La Mondiale, um, is one of the favourites of the race and uh, certainly um, a rider that I, that I follow. Um, and then we have Luke Plapp as well, um, who rides for Jayco Alula, who is the Aussie champion. So get behind Luke and Ben and um, yeah, what am I doing now? I'm going to get in a advantageous spot. There's Christophe Laporte again. This is sick. Let's roll. Yeah. But I can see the team cars coming, so I'm gonna have to go. But I love you loads. Oh! Bloody hell! <laughs> Jeez. Great toilet stop. I wasn't expecting that at all. <laughs> Alrighty, made it back here to Torino from Veneria Reale and uh, what I need to do is get back to the pad and charge my phone. But I'm also hopefully going to get Eurosport on and see if I can track the race so that I know when it's coming in and I'll get some more footage for you as well as like the, the post race, you know, argy bargy. Quick pit stop. Benefits of being in Italy, got the cycling on free to air in my boudoir. Um, looks like a breakaway of a few strong riders. All the usual culprits riding on the front, uh, UAE, Alpecin de Kunic and Ineos Grenadiers. But yeah, this is my little editing station. And this is the Mole Antonelliana, right in the middle of Torino. How sick is that? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's been a good day so far and I'm going to get back down to the square in 15 minutes. Okay, I've just been up to the fan zone up there and it looks like we've got a really interesting situation where you've got Gabrig Zabir from Lidl Trek and an Intermarche 1T rider and they have made that gap even bigger and obviously dropped the rest of the group. So that gap is now at three minutes with 50 k's to go and Gabrig Zabir nearly overcooked a corner big time there which he's put his hand back and apologized for so you can tell that he's trying to push that gap and now i'm just going to head down to the finish line just to scope out a good spot to watch them come in uae are on the front of the peloton they are chasing and i uh, look i don't have eyes on the race right now but 
Maybe that says to me that they want Pogaccia in pink by the end of the day. Yeah, so the race is really spread out actually, by the looks of it, lots of breaks. It's actually very hard to make out what's going on, but I'm trying to keep up with the live feed. The team cars travel at such a rate. Oh my God, they're absolutely flying. Big crash, looked like a Visma Lisa bike rider down and quite a few others. Okay, brilliant, we've got some commentary now. The man in the lead is Kamjan, remember the name. Also, look at this spot that I've got. So a few miners are going to save their day. Five days now. Karma Jean for Intermarchi Wanti only has 12 seconds. And apparently Pogacha's made a move as well to distance his GC rivals. So you've got two races happening at this point in the race. You've got the race for the stage, so the winner today, and that's in the front group. But you've also got a group of riders who are trying to win overall over the 21 days of racing and that group are just behind. So that's the likes of Pogaccia, Garant Thomas. And so, yeah, there's two races unfolding and it always makes Grand Tours really interesting. Italian rider Conchi for Alpecin de Kunic now out front. He's got about 10 seconds. Young Italian chap dreaming of a stage win at the Giro d'Italia. Pogaccia has attacked with Alaphilippe as well, former world champion. It's all happening now, they're about three kilometers away. So good having this TV on the other side of the road. <laughs> Could actually see what's going on. So there's there's no reason why now why to There you go. So if they if they approach the finish line together, it becomes a, a case of who's the better sprinter. Not not necessarily who's the better rider, but who is the better sprinter. Go on, Boggy! Go on, Boggy! Go on, Boggy! is actually a huge win for Navaez, um, Ineos Grenadiers rider. And he's like, yeah, I'm what? I'm what? <laughs> so Jonathan Navaez takes it. What a ride and what a finish. Just heading back to my Airbnb now, but thought I'd just uh, reflect on some of the big winners and losers of that race. So. Um, Pogaccia, someone that everyone had billed as today's uh, potential winner, he came in third so he led out a sprint um, and with 200 metres to go opened up, uh, apparently him and his team just gave it hell for leather at the end and just blew the bunch apart um, but Jonathan Navarez came around him and um, won for Ineos Grenadiers although he's Ecuadorian one for the British team Ineos Grenadiers who actually had a great day in the end because Garant Thomas only finished 10 seconds behind that bunch so he's still in the top 10 and has lost pretty much no time although his teammate Timon Aronsman who was meant to be someone who um, could challenge for that top five spot has lost quite a bit of time I think. Max Schackerman also finishing up second today so a big result for him and yeah look I'm gonna head back edit all of this video because there's probably a lot that I said today that was incorrect simply because I just couldn't really see what was going on with the race and look if there is anything that remains in this video that is incorrect or that I've got slightly wrong please feel free to comment let me know um, what you know was actually the case yeah I guess the goal of this video is just to really show the energy of a Grand Tour and show what it's like from a spectator's point of view. Um, so hopefully we can inspire more people to watch this amazing sport and, and pick it up as well. So thanks for watching and if you're still with me then think about watching some of my other videos. Cheers.